bladder cancer is the topic and bladder cancer is quite prevalent in North America in fact in the US it is the fourth most common cancer among men and the mean age at diagnosis is approximately 65 years of age and if you look at it from a male to female ratio it's about 3 to 1 some books say 4 to 1 now let's talk a little bit about the risk factors why would somebody develop bladder cancer number one reason by far is smoking it accounts for at least half of all bladder cancers next reason is analgesic use and in particular analgesic abuse long-term abuse of that medication other meds that have been linked to the development of bladder cancer include cyclophosphamide a worm infection is also popular on licensing exams as a cause of bladder cancer and the name of that worm is schistosoma and one more cause I'd like to mention is exposure to certain chemicals in particular there's one that occurs in the dye industry and the name of that chemical is naphthylamine and this chemical is used in the dye industry so if somebody works in that field they could be exposed to this chemical and that could lead to bladder cancer now let's talk about the types of bladder cancer 90 percent of all bladder cancers are what is known as transitional cell carcinomas and of these the vast majority are known as papillary carcinomas and what that really is referring to is that they're not invasive they're really just superficial in nature and therefore can be easily resected a small percentage of bladder cancers however are squamous cell carcinomas and these types of carcinomas are the ones that are caused by the parasitic infections that I previously mentioned with that worm known as schistosoma symptoms of bladder cancer by far the most common initial presentation is hematuria and then of course in addition to having blood in the urine patient will complain of some sort of voiding symptoms like pain during urination burning frequency of urination and also sometimes even pus in the urine known as pyuria and in advanced cases of bladder cancer the patient can have symptoms of pelvic pain diagnosis in order to diagnose bladder cancer you have to do a cystoscopy you have to go in and actually visually see inside the bladder with a camera and while you are doing that you can take a sample of the tissue and send for a biopsy I have a little diagram here I'd like to share that shows a cystoscope and as you can see it has a little camera that you can insert all the way into the bladder you can look inside see what's going on and at the same time you can use the cystoscope to take a small sample of the tissue and then send it to the lab to see if the tissue is indeed containing malignant cells in addition to the cystoscopy and biopsy you can also do a urine cytology and that can also detect malignant cells in the urine treatment of bladder cancer usually involves a combination of surgery and chemotherapy but of course it all depends on how advanced the cancer is most of the time the cancers are superficial they just involve a partial resection but if the cancer is more advanced then it may require a full cystectomy entirely removing the bladder when you have advanced cases
So now let's take a look at a few vignettes. Which of the following is the most powerful risk factor for bladder cancer in today's Western society? Essentially what they're asking is what's the number one risk factor? And as previously discussed, the number one risk factor greater than 50% of bladder cancers are due to cigarette smoking. Which of the following is specifically associated with infection with schistosoma hematobium? This is a worm parasite and it's associated with bladder cancer. So we know it's one of the choices that has to do with the bladder but we have to figure out what type of cell. Now remember 90% of bladder cancers are transitional cell which is choice D. That's the most common. When this worm is the causative factor the bladder cancer is squamous cell. So the answer to this question is C. A 66 year old man who has been a patient for several years calls the office to report an episode of apparently bloody urine. He is instructed to come to the office where a UA confirms gross hematuria without proteinuria or casts. The patient denies any pain and is anxious for an explanation. Physical exam is normal. Most appropriate next step is. Not a lot of questions are this skeletal. Doesn't have much information. Just age and hematuria. Huge differential diagnosis exists for hematuria. But I think what they're really just getting at here is that they want you to go in and take a look and that can be done with a cystoscopy which would be choice D. A 59 year old man made an appointment to see his physician because he had noticed blood in his urine for the past week otherwise he felt healthy and he had no problem voiding his urine. His primary care physician found no other unusual signs or symptoms and referred him to a urologist who conducted a cystoscopic exam of the bladder. A small sample of the bladder wall was removed and examined microscopically. The lesion was evaluated as being a stage T1 papillary carcinoma which has invaded the lamina propria but has not invaded the superficial layer of the muscularis propria. The lesion was completely excised by transurethral resection. Which of the following is true concerning this condition? Okay, let's go through these one by one. A, the prevalence of the types of bladder cancer is equally common throughout the world. Well, we all know that the most common type of bladder cancer, 90% of them in fact, are transitional cells. So this is not true. They're not equal. B, the type of carcinogen having the greatest potential of causing this condition is found in smoke foods. That's a bit of a red herring. Smoking, yes, but not smoked foods. There's no link to that, really. C, removal of the growth by transurethral resection usually is not followed by recurrence of the condition. That's not true because 50 to 75% of the time, you unfortunately do have recurrence. D. Usually the condition described is treated by radical cystectomy. That's not true because most of the time the cancers are superficial in nature and therefore only require a partial resection. E. Pelvic pain and difficulty in voiding urine are the earliest signs of bladder cancer. That's not true because pelvic pain is actually a sign of advanced bladder cancer. F. Women and men have equal chance of developing bladder cancer. That's not true. The male to female ratio is approximately 3 to 1. G. In the United States, most primary bladder cancers are transitional cell carcinomas. That is true. And finally, H. Bladder cancer is primarily a disease of the middle-aged, 40 to 55 years of age. That's incorrect because the mean age of bladder cancer is about 65.